If we have a block of code that we need to reuse over and over again, we can group that code into functions and that way it will be more easier for us to reuse it and it will be more cleaner code. Here what we see is a function. So we type void, the name of the function, open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly brackets. So let's do that. So here I'm going to type void, the name of the function is going to be print, so print something, open close parentheses, open close curly brackets. What we put between these curly brackets, so what we put here will be executed when we call this function. In the previous video, we saw that we use debug.log to print something in the console or to be more precise, to print the mathematical operations that we have performed on our variables. So here I'm going to type debug.log, so debug.log, and here I'm going to type printed from function. And this right here will be executed when we call this print something function. In order to call this function, we are simply going to call its name. So the name of the function is print something, open close parentheses and end the statement with semicolon. This will call this function right here. It will go here. So when we run the game, it will go in the start function. It will go inside of this print something function and execute everything what it finds right here. So let's test it out. If I go back in my Unity editor, here I still have the game object from the previous video and my script is attached on it. If I run the game, we are going to see printed from function is being called or executed. So this is a function right here. Now, which brings me to these functions. This is a function, this start function is a function from this mono behavior, which we will take a look at a little bit closer in a couple of next videos and see what this mono behavior is. But this start function is a function of this mono behavior class and it will be called right away when we run our game. Of course, we have more functions from this mono behavior. We have the awake function and with awake with capital A, so this one right here, this function is the first function that's going to be called when we run the game. After that, our start function will be called. So even if we take this print something and put it here in this awake function, and if I go back in the Unity editor, I'm going to clear the console, run the game, we are going to see printed from function right here in the console. Because this awake function is the first one that's going to be called. And we can test this just to make my point. I'm going to type debug.log. And here I'm going to type printed from awake, all capitals. And I'm going to copy this and put it here in the start and this one is going to be printed from start in order to see from which function is called. And I know I misspelled all of these here, which is not important, but we know awake and start is right here. So we will see which one is first called. So when I run the game, when I hit play, we see here printed from awake and after that printed from start is being called which means that our awake function is being called first. After that, we are going to call our start function. Going back to our topic, which is functions, we have a couple of functions that we want to introduce. To be precise, we have four functions. This is not something that is in programming. I just invented that. So four types of functions, and this is better for me so that I can explain which type of functions we have. So you can think of it that we have four. And the first type of function is this one right here. This function takes no arguments and it does not return any value. We have a function that takes arguments and does not return a value. And we also have a function that does not return a value or returns a value, but does not take arguments and a function that returns a value and also takes arguments. 
Let's dive into it and see it. So this one right here does not take an argument or it does not also return a value. Let's create a function that will take an argument. So here I'm going to type void print something to or here I'm going to type print argument. So print argument so that we can differentiate between these functions. If we want to add an argument, which can be a string, a boolean, a double, a float, any of our variables that we have, we add them right here in these parentheses. So here I can add a string and I can name it message. The name message is the name of this parameter. And here, instead of using debug.log and adding our own string, we can simply type here debug.log and we can pass this message, which is this one right here. We don't need to type printed from function or so on and so forth. We can simply type out or pass this message, which is an argument. Now, when we call this function, we don't simply type print argument like this. We also need to pass or add this parameter that is asking from us, which is a string. So now here I can type, this is a function that takes an argument, an argument or a parameter. This right here is called function argument or function parameter. So we can simply pass our string like this, or we can create here string s is equal to, and we can take all of this right here and create our string and then we can pass our string like this right here. So there is no difference. You can choose if you first want to create that string and pass it, or if you simply want to type it out like this, it's up to you. If I go back and run this now, so if I run it, we are going to see this is a function that takes an argument. And to prove my point that, or what I mentioned, in the beginning, if we have a function or block of code that we want to reuse over and over again, here I'm going to call the same function print argument, but here I'm going to pass something else. Simply going to type something else. And we are going to see both of these printed in the console. So if I go back, run the game, we are going to see this is a function that takes an argument and something else printed in the console which means that we can reuse these functions. We can call them whenever we need them to. Now, here we are simply passing this string message. We can also pass other parameters, for example, integers, and we can calculate them. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another function that's going to return a value. That value that's going to be returned is also a variable. So it can either be a string, a float, a boolean, a double, so on and so forth. Let's say I want to return an integer. Here I'm going to type int, so instead of void, we are going to type int. And here I'm going to type return the value, which is the name of our function. In the function that returns a value, we need to add a return statement. And it's like this, return, and for example, two it will return number two. Let me just explain the difference between the function that returns and does not return a value. A function that does not return a value has this void type here. So void indicates that this function will not return a value. If a function returns a value, we need to type which value it returns or the type of that value. Is it an integer, a Boolean, a string, a float, a double, so we need to type that. In our case, this function returns an integer. So we can return here too. And I can go here in our start function and I can call our print argument and I can simply type the value returned is, and I can type here plus to concatenate and here I can type return the value, which is our function. Now, when our function returns a value, in this case, an integer, we can type like this. We can say int a is equal to 
return the value and it will return an integer and now we have that integer saved here in this variable called a we can also call this function right here and it will return a value which is an integer and it will concatenate that integer with a string so if i go back and run this now so if i run the game we're going to see the return val the value return excuse me is 2 we can return any number that we want but the main point is that we actually return a value now this is just a rough example of a function that returns a value let's take another example where we will actually see or understand this in more depth so here i'm also going to return an integer and i'm going to name this one calculate two numbers and this function is going to take two parameters so we are not limited only by one parameter we can add 2 10 20 how many we want that is up to us so here i'm going to provide int a and if i want to provide one more i type comma int b if i want to add more comma int c comma int d or f so on and so forth how many parameters i want but i just need to add comma and we are not limited to one type of parameter so here i'm adding integers we are not limited only to integers i can say here comma and pass a string i don't know e i can say comma pass a boolean r i can say comma pass a double ee -E, so on and so forth any type of parameter how many i wish to add i can do that there is no limit to that it only depends what you want to do so for example this function is called calculate two numbers we have two integers and we need to return an integer we can either do this we can create int c is equal to a plus b and then we can type return c or we can directly return a plus b so we can say return a plus b and remove this above so anything or either of these two what you want to use you can use it you can create an integer then return it or you can directly return these two arguments and if i go back here and i'm simply going to use debug.log and here i'm going to type the numbers or the value of the numbers the value of the numbers is and here i can say plus and i can type calculate two numbers and let's say for example three and six and when we call this function so when we call the function that has multiple arguments we also separate them by comma so we see three then comma then six the same way as we added those arguments so int a which is the name of the argument comma int b comma int c so on and so forth if i go in my unity editor and run the game now we are going to see the value of the numbers is nine of course we can change these numbers instead of three and six i can say 32 and 66 if i go back now and run the game we are going to see the value of the numbers is 98 and of course we can reuse this function so here i can type i don't know one and six and then i can again type here for example two and three and every time it will print the value of these given numbers meaning that we are reusing the functions over and over again so briefly these are the four types of functions that we are going to use in our game development so we have a function that takes no parameters so we did not add any parameters right here and it does not return a value void means that from here we will not return anything and any code that we put here of course we are simply adding these debug.log statements but when we create or begin creating our game we are going to create a function that's going to animate the player the function that's going to move the player make him jump and all of that code we are going to put inside of those functions which we will see so don't worry again i'm repeating this is just a brief introduction of this specific topic 
And when we start creating our games, we are going to use this over and over and over again. And we are going to understand everything in depth, what we are doing. So don't worry if everything is not crystal clear at the moment. It will be when we start creating our games. Trust me on that one. So again, we have a function that does not return a value, which is indicated by void right here. It does not take any argument and we are simply printing out to the console. This function takes one argument, which is a string, and it can be any type of variable, a double, a float, a boolean, an integer, a string, any type of variable that we want. And we can reuse this message right here in our debug.log. So instead of printing this static function, so every time we call this print function or print something, it will print what we add here. But when we call this print argument, it will print what we provide right here. So we can control what is printed in this function. We cannot control except if we change it right here. And if we call this function 1 million times, 1 million time, it will be or printed from function will be printed in our console. But if we call this function 10 times and provide a different string, all of those different strings will be printed. Here we have a function that will return a value. This is just a rough example and it will return an integer and we are simply returning two. The function that returns a value needs to have this return statement. That means return the value two from this function. Think of it, you have a friend and I don't know, you gave him $5 and he returns $2 to you. So this is that return statement. It needs to return something, give it back. And we can even capture these values inside of our variables. So here it returns an integer. So we can type here int a is equal to, and we can type return the value. And this is perfectly legit. And it will return the value to put it in integer a and we can reuse that value. And lastly, we have a function that returns a value and it also takes arguments. Of course, the value that's being returned, it can be a float, an integer, a boolean, a double, any variable. It does not have to be an integer, but this is just for example. And also here, we don't need to only add integers as parameters. We can add strings, booleans, doubles, anything that we want. And here we are simply returning a plus b. It can be a minus b, a multiplied by t by b, excuse me, divided by b, so on and so forth. So these are the four types of functions that we are going to use. Again, we group a block of code that we want to reuse inside of these functions. And again, don't worry, we will see all of these functions again multiple times every time we create in every game we are going to see thousands of these functions so don't worry we are going to explain this if it's not crystal clear at the moment it will be so don't worry please and again i'm repeating four types of functions that can not or the function that will not return a value and does not take an argument a function that will not return a value but does take an argument which we can reuse inside of the function a function that will return a value and we are simply returning a rough value and here we can control which value is being returned so we can pass any two numbers the same as with these two functions if we call this function 10 times it will return to 10 times but if we call this function 10 times and provide 10 different numbers it will return those 10 different numbers so in short this was about functions